Welcome to Spotlight. Western imperialism has been exploiting the Western Asia region and looting its resources for decades at the least. The Westerners, led by the U.S., have waged wars on countries in the region. They've created and supported terror groups to wreak havoc in West Asia and wreck its people's lives. But the equation seems to be changing. In recent years and decades, resistance groups in the region have been gaining more power and popularity. And now, uh, Palestinian resistance in Gaza has been impeding the Israeli war machine. Yemeni's operations in the Red Sea have hurt Israel's economy, and Iraq's resistance groups target American bases in Iraq and Syria, demanding the expulsion of U.S. forces from their country. Now, tonight we're going to look into the root causes of this uh, popular growth of the resistance front in the region on Press TV Spotlight. Joining us on the program, we have... Writer and political analyst Ali Risk, who's joining us from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. And also we have journalist, activist and political analyst John Bosnich joining us from Belgrade. Well, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with Mr. Risk in the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Uh, uh, Mr. Risk, the Yemeni army says that the U.S. and the U.K. bear full responsibility for the attacks against their country pledging to retaliate. Give us your thoughts on the nature of that retaliation and what you will be expecting. Also tell us more about this defiant message that the Yemenis are sending to the U.S. and its allies as they've been clear that these attacks will persist until Israel ends its crimes against Palestinians in Gaza. Regarding the first part of your question about um, what kind of retaliation we might expect from the Houthi movement or from Ansar Allah, uh, Ansar Allah has revealed that it, it is indeed a force to be reckoned with. Of course, it gained this reputation given that it was able to achieve victory against the Saudi Emirati coalition, which enjoyed strong Western backing. Uh, but I think that the latest operations reveal even more uh, military expertise, if you would like. Um, the operation, for example, the more recent one, which targeted uh, some American and British ships, uh, this was a very sophisticated attack, which combined between drones and missiles. And by the way, it bears a lot of similarity to the methods employed by Hezbollah here in Lebanon. So I think that um, the Houthis do have the ability uh, to launch a pretty strong attack. And uh, it has to be pointed out that there will be a lot of targets. Um, you know, these sea areas, the Arabian Sea, Beb al Mandib, uh, there are a lot of, quite a lot of targets for the Ansar Allah to choose from. So I do expect that there will be retaliation, and it could very well be, it depends, it could very well be um, a strong retaliation. On the other hand, it might be a proportionate retaliation because the operation you saw last night or this morning, actually, early, very early this morning, from the Americans and from the British. Um, it was a violation of Yemeni sovereignty, yes, but it wasn't like a, uh, a very harsh operation, if you would like. Uh, you know, five people being killed. The British side said that it, it indicated or hinted between the lines that this it wasn't after war. So we have to see how the Yemenis will do it. But no doubt they do have some strong military capabilities. Ask your question about the, um, the message of, of defiance which was delivered. I think that the Yemenis have proved them, proven themselves, as Sayyid Abdel Malik al Houthi mentioned in his speech yesterday, to be at the forefront in defending the people of Gaza who are being subject to these uh, daily killings. And I believe that all of this is part of the new Middle East, uh, you know, Yemen, Iraq, what we're seeing, the reaction which we're seeing is part of a new Middle East, which I think the Americans hadn't hoped for. I recall in 2006, then Secretary, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice said it was time for a new Middle East. But this Middle East, which is, which is emerging right now, is totally different, I think, than the one the Americans had in mind. John Bosnich, Hamas has called the U.S. and U.K. attacks on Yemen an uncalculated terrorist act. A political commentator that we spoke to here on Press TV also believes that the move was a miscalculation. Was this a miscalculated attack, in your opinion? 
obviously a mistake. Um, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't call it such a, such a small thing as a miscalculation. It's a grievous error in international law, and it's an act of aggression, unlawful, illegal, state to state aggression. So definitely, the United States and England are making more mistakes, and I use the word more there because they are the major powers behind the Israeli operation and slaughter of countless Palestinians. So they are tying their fate more closely to Israel. And since Israel is losing this conflict, this is going to cost a lot to America and to England as well. Ali Rizk in Beirut, how important uh, has the unified response been from the resistance in the region in retaliation for the Gaza war? There's Lebanon's Hezbollah, Yemen's Ansarla resistance movement and the armed forces of the country, resistance groups in Syria uh, and Iraq as well. Well, I think that uh, most important of all, it's making the situation more costly uh, for the Israelis. You know, um, if you were to talk about 2006, for example, I remember back then Hezbollah was basically standing alone in confronting the Israeli side. Um, you know, uh, of course, I, we have to of course mention that Iran has, did support Hezbollah, Syria also. But set those two countries apart, there was no other, you know, real support for Hezbollah. Indeed, some of the Arab countries back then were even against Hezbollah and the rooting for the Israeli side. So things have changed a lot um, since 2006. Uh, <clears throat> Yemen in particular has emerged as a force to be reckoned with. Um, the Syrian crisis, ironically, has actually strengthened uh, the axis led by Iran, whilst the aim, maybe, of some of those who were behind the crisis in Syria was to weaken the Iranian-led led bloc. What's happened, actually, is that this bloc has further strengthened. Um, Hezbollah were played a part, and now we have a Hezbollah model, if you would like, present in Syria. Uh, in Iraq as well, you have a group which is called Kata'ib Hezbollah or the Hezbollah Brigades. So you have what I would call the expansion of the Hezbollah model uh, in, in the region. And this um, unified or the united fronts, I think, that reflects that very issue, the spread of the Iranian dash Hezbollah model um, uh, in this region. And that's costing the Israelis a lot. And I think more importantly, it's costing the Americans because what you've seen is that the, uh, uh, in particular, the Iraqi side has been targeting American bases, not only in Iraq and in Syria. Uh, go back 10 years ago, for example, I don't think that the Americans would have been subject to such retaliation or such a response. So uh, the United Front, I think one of the most important impacts it has is to make U.S. support for Israel more costly. Now, the Americans, at the same time, it has to be said, they don't appear to be backing down for the time being. They don't appear to be reigning in Israel. You know, there are some attempts, but uh, the American pressure, I think, is, hasn't still reached that very, very firm level. And this uh, takes us back, you know, we are, you know, to this question, why this American support for Israel whilst this support is actually backfiring and harming American interests. And so the big question raised is for how long will America tolerate its interests being put in jeopardy just for the sake of the Israeli ally? That, I think, speaks a lot to the uh, dilemma or the major problem U.S. policy in the Middle East suffers from. John Bosnich, uh, reactions are pouring in following the U.S. said attack on Yemen with Iran and resistance uh, movements in the region strongly condemning the attacks. Iran has, uh, as you mentioned earlier, denounced uh, the violation of Yemen's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and it also says that the attacks will foment insecurity in the region and beyond. So in the region and beyond was uh, the highlight uh, of that statement coming from Tehran. Please unpack that for us. Well, when we talk about in the region and beyond, first of all, we're talking about the actual conflict affecting Yemen and the region around Yemen. But what has to be understood here is that the American military presence in the region is openly exposed and becomes a legitimate target 
once they take aggressive actions against other states. We know that American forces are unlawfully, both against the law of Syria and against the international law, present and stealing oil from Syria. One should expect a, some kind of a targeting and a response to those unlawful American occupation forces. American forces are still present and American interests are still present in Iraq. Those should most likely be coming under some kind of pressure in the near future. And what has happened is the Anglo-American imperial influence in the region is bringing the local nations together. And there is no reason why Palestine cannot enter into a military self-defense pact with Yemen, which requires Yemen to come to the military defense of Palestine if Palestine continues to be attacked by Israel, backed by England and America. So what England and America have done by giving carte blanche to Israel is they have created a situation in which all of the victims of their colonial era and of Israel's aggression will now be drawn organically together to defend themselves. And as history will teach you, those who are defending their own land generally defeat those who are attacking from outside. This does not look good for the Anglo-American empire. It looks worse for Israel, and it does signify a turning point in the history of the region. Ali Risk, Islamic Jihad resistance group says that the aggression on Yemen is part of Western support for Israel and shows that Washington is managing the Gaza war. Lebanon's Hezbollah movement also said that the aggression is yet another proof of the U.S. complicity in what it called catastrophes in Gaza and the region. Was the attack on Yemen even more of a, re a revelation uh, of how the U.S. fully supports the massacre in Gaza? Is that a question I to me? I think that uh, oh. I've been following um, the this issue for quite some for the past week or so what's been written in the western press about the houthi movement and, and about the yemeni front uh, there are some senior scholars very senior scholars people like kenneth pollock catherine zimmerman and other well-known american scholars who are at least in the u.s considered to be you know the most the brightest minds when it comes to the middle east um, all of these voices or the high majority of them have been focusing on the necessity of the American administration responding to the Houthis. When it comes to Iraq, when it comes to Syria, I haven't noticed, you know, these calls or this very vocal atmosphere calling to take action. But when it comes to Bab al the Yemeni front, there have been a lot of calls to take action, and not to mention calls coming from within Congress, for some members of Congress, I'm not generalizing. So I think that the Biden administration felt that it had to do something uh, in response to what was taking place. And this operation, uh, again, it was a violation, yes, but it was quite a small scale operation, as if the Biden administration saying, look, you know, I've done something, I've taken action. It seems to me it was more an attempt to silence certain critics more than it was to accomplish uh, anything else. Um, that's how I view the situation. I might be mistaken, and that's not uh, something which we're not used to for the Americans. Uh, often the American side takes action just to show it's taking action. If you recall Donald Trump, when he launched the Tomahawk missiles against Syria, the main motive for him for doing that was to distinguish himself from his predecessor, Barack Obama, who at the very end withdrew or didn't go ahead with a strike he had promised to, because if you recall, they spoke about the chemical weapons red line, etc., and then when there was a chemical weapons attack which they pinned on the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, but Obama backed down, he didn't go ahead and implement that red line. And I think what you're seeing now with Yemen is quite similar. You have a president who's responding to certain domestic pressures. Now, I think the danger lies in the fact that after carrying out this operation, what if the Yemenis retaliate? What will the American response to that be? Because Biden, particularly now in an election year, I think wants to be seen as being some kind of a tough guy promoting that tough guy image. 
So if the Yemenis retaliate, you might see, possibly, I'm not certain, you might see another American retaliation, and then the situation could snowball. I think that's the dangerous scenario. John Bosnich, uh, the Iraqi prime minister, has said that Baghdad wants a quick withdrawal of the quote-unquote destabilizing U.S. forces from Iraq. Now, Baghdad has not yet uh, set a deadline, but still, uh, Iraqi politicians, uh, uh, they have a historic opportunity to expel uh, the U.S. from Iraq. How close are we to seeing that day? I think we're looking at a departure demand from Iraq within the next two to three months. I think it's that close, and I think that this is going to further destabilize the ability of the United States and its English backers to project power into the region. I think this is a critical historic step forward for Iraq and for the people of the region as well. And I think that a properly delivered legal demand that the American forces recognize the sovereignty of Iraq is the way to start this and then to pursue this through all of the existing international organizations. And this puts America in the place that it used to say the rest of the countries in the region were, and that is, it makes America an international rogue state. Ali Risk, with all the years of the U.S. and its allies trying to exert their hegemony in the region, a point now has been reached where the people of the region are quite unified in the demand that the U.S. and foreign forces must leave the region. How important and significant is this unison that's being seen now? Well, I think, yes, it is significant, and it just goes to show you how Israel is becoming a burden for the United States. Uh, these popular demands for the Americans to leave, you might, might not have heard them had America not taken this very supportive stance of Israel in the current conflict. Uh, you know, there are disagreements amongst a lot of, uh, amongst the people of the region when it comes to certain issues. But when it comes to Palestine, the populations at the very least appear to be united. And so against that backdrop, the American support for the Israeli onslaught on Gaza is costing America and is leading to the demands for the Americans to leave. I would, however, be cautious about, you know, um, expecting America to withdraw within a few months. America will not withdraw without a fight. You know, you have this addiction, you have the deep state, which is deeply committed to having a presence, America having a presence. And one of the main motives, let's be clear, of the American presence in Iraq is to counter Iran, to have a presence near Iran, because Iran is considered the main competitor of America and, most importantly, the main uh, challenge towards Israel. So, you know, the Americans uh, are not going to leave without a strong fight. And I think that expecting them to leave in a few months, I think that might be a bit far-fetched. Uh, John Bozic, uh, in spite of all the efforts to weaken the resistance, why is the resistance front still thriving in the region? Oh, I just want to correct something first. I'm expecting a request for the departure of the American forces to come within the next two to three sure. months. How long it takes for the U.S. forces to leave is another matter, and I agree with your other commentator on that point. But the request has to come from Iraq as a sign of solidarity with the Palestinian people. And I believe that the crisis in Palestine is going to rise to such a level within the next two to three months that such a request will be made. How long it takes to implement, that's another question. But back to your question, I do think that we're seeing a, a shift in the entire geopolitical situation in the region. I think Israel has gone too far. I think that America is used to taking orders in the region from Israel. And I think that the blowback that nobody is talking about is that the crimes being committed by Israel now in Palestine are going to hobble the influence of the Israel lobby in the U.S. Congress. And if that happens, if the Israel lobby loses its predominance in U.S. politics, it could change the nature of U.S. politics and it could change the actual behavior of the U.S. empire. This is a serious and major challenge to Israel's influence, not just locally, but Israel's lobbying power in Washington. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing American democracy overcome the piles of money that Israel has been using to bribe members of Congress.
All right, uh, Mr. Risk, very briefly, if you may, I saw you nodding there. Do you agree with, uh, with Mr. Bosnich? Yep, um, yes, very, very important points. Uh, indeed, if, you know, they can overcome the Israeli lobby, uh, that would be something monumental or a very, very new phase in American politics because, uh, you know, American policy in the Middle East is very much dictated uh, by Israel. It's very much done to serve the Israeli side. Um, what Biden has uh, done, the approach he's taken with the current conflict, does not uh, bode well for American interests in any way whatsoever. It only serves Israel. Very quickly, just an example about Yemen. Uh, Yemen is home to AQAP, Al-Qaeda, in the Arabian Peninsula. And that is considered to be the most dangerous branch of Al-Qaeda to the U.S. If you recall, there was an attack in Pensacola in Florida which was adopted, or the AQAP claimed responsibility for that attack. Now they're launching a war against a party which has a history of fighting Al-Qaeda. And that, I think, is completely right. contradictory to American interests. Okay, that's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, thanks to my guest, Ali Risk, writer and political analyst, joining us from Beirut, and uh, Mr. John Bozic, journalist, activist, and political analyst, speaking to us from Belgrade. And special thanks to you, our viewers, for staying with us on tonight's Spotlight. It's good night for now and see you next time.